Okay, today I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm going to share my love for multi-disc games. And no, that's not games that require multiple discs to install. That's games that require multiple discs to play. Think disc swapping, my friends. My first experience with a multi-disc game was Goosebumps Escape from Horrorland way back in probably 1996-97 on our Windows 95 machine. I played that game to death and it being on the multiple disc format meant that you could have a longer game, have more things in it, which is probably the main reason why I like them. And when I say I played this thing to death, I mean literally played the thing to death. I ended up having to buy an extra copy of it because I scratched one of the discs and my CD drive just refused to read it. Now that was really annoying back in the day because it was almost impossible to get hold of replacements. And while we're on the subject of scratched discs, Blade Runner, when we got it, actually came to us scratched. So the whole quality control thing wasn't great in those days. In the end my dad had to write to Westwood and pay for them to send him a replacement set of discs, but we'll come to that later. Now my most recent multi-disc purchase is this. It's called Black Dahlia. I came across it in my local charity shop and I took one look at the box and thought, I must have this. This is one of those uh, live action, point and click, adventure slash detective games that I just love so, so much. It's got Dennis Hopper in it as well. Some of these games are like real proper Hollywood celebrities in it. And things like Strangest one I saw was Brian Blessed in Privateer 2 The Darkening. But the most amazing thing about this game is not the fact that it's good, it's got Dennis Hopper in it, or it's a multi-disc game. It's the fact that it works on Windows Vista, and 64-bit Vista at that. It's kind of weird because the majority of games of this vintage don't work at all. But what's weirder still is this game is effectively an MS-DOS game. MS DOS does not work on Windows Vista at all. I mean, if you come, if you see here, inside the folder you've got DOS 4GW, which is the executable for the DOS gaming mode. You've got DOS setup as well, and like the 386 virtual device drivers, etc. Yet it runs perfectly on Windows Vista with the included Windows icon. Though it does get a little bit weird sometimes. It's, mm, runs a little bit fast on occasion but everything seems to be okay and the movies all work fine. So, just because it's Windows 95 does not mean you won't be able to run it. Some of my other favourites include Broken Swords 1 and 2, Under a Killing Moon which is an interactive movie by Access Software, Imperium Galacticus 1 and 2, various Command and Conquer games, Titanic Adventure Out of Time, and Blade Runner, as I mentioned earlier. Disc swapping has been a feature of video games since the floppy disk days. A lot of games on 8-bit systems, such as the Commodore 64, the BBC Micro, etc. would require you to swap out discs for extra ones, or flip them over depending on which system you had. Um, and this was no different with PC games. Once man developers reached the limits of the CD capacities, they had to move on to alternate discs. And in my experience, it's only made the games better. Now, that's not to say that having extra discs makes a game automatically better. We take Mass Effect 2 on the Xbox 360, for example, we'll probably get a lot of flack for this, but two discs does not a great game make. And nothing is more true in this case compared to the original game it just does not compare frankly and I don't see why they needed two discs for it when the game was a lot shorter than I was expecting considering it was on two discs. Now in terms of compatibility there are some issues with a lot of these games but some of them just work completely straight off the bat. Blade Runner for example has worked on every Windows machine I've ever tried it on including my 64-bit rig here though don't hold me to that. Broken Swords 1 and 2, it worked all the way up to XP that I found, though my version that I've got is 
a re-release version that uses ScumVM to emulate the engine on it, so that will work on anything you try it on. Though if you're using Windows Vista installation, it takes a bloody long time. Under a killing moon, pure MS-DOS, so you'll need an emulator such as DOSBox in order to play it. Imperium Galactica 2, once it's been updated to the latest version, including the unofficial patches, it will run on pretty much anything, because they have a special Windows NT mode executable, which covers Windows NT, Windows 2000, Windows XP, Vista 7, etc. Um, Imperium Galactica 1, again, pure DOS. I'd recommend DOSBox for it, for example, but I was able to get it running on my Windows XP machine after a bit of faffing around. Command & Conquer, never actually tried running older versions on Windows Vista for example but I do have the first decade package which is fully compatible and will and you can get some community patches for it that make it run even better. Black Dahlia works straight off the bat though because of the size of hard drives today it thinks that the extra however many gigabytes you've got is in fact non-space so you'll need to install it on either a small hard disk or a data stick and copy it over to the machine's main hard drive but as a rule of thumb, if it's Windows 95, then it's most likely going to be a 32-bit program, but have a 16-bit installer, which well, that will work fine on 32-bit versions of Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7. If you've got 64-bit, it just won't run at all. Some games, for example, like SimCity 2000, um, everything is just contained in a folder and all this installer does is copy it over to your hard drive so you can just literally copy and paste the folder to your hard drive and run it from there but a lot of them will involve a lot of other technical stuff that just copying and pasting won't do so you'll either have to use a 32-bit machine or find perhaps an installer somewhere on the internet that somebody has made that's 32-bit a good company I found for that is Sierra. A lot there's actually a website called Sierra Help Pages, I believe, that has either community made or Sierra made installers that will allow you to install games such as Phantasmagoria, which is a brilliant series, onto your 64 bit systems. Um, also, Space Quests, and pretty much anything made by Sierra. Uh, most of the time it will use either a DOS version of the game, such as the Phantasmagoria series, um, and a lot of them will also include what's called slowdown patches, which will make the game run slower on the more modern hardware, because a lot of the time these games run at unplayably fast speeds. And also, the at least the Phantasmagoria ones have deinterlacers, which removes the, black, the little black bars in between some of the lines in the picture will make the picture quality look a lot nicer. Otherwise they will use 32-bit versions of the game. Phantasmagoria unfortunately is not 32-bit compatible so they have to use the MS-DOS version but there are a few others such as the Gabriel Knight games where the third game in the series is fully 32-bit compatible so they were able to use that. Most of the time I would suggest a good source for these games is if you, at least if you live in the UK your local charity shop quite often they will have a lot of older games that people have donated ebay is another very good option for it you can usually get hold of them quite cheap from there amazon sometimes as well but you're liable to spend a bit more however there is a website called www.gog.com which stands for good old games which is where you can buy fully updated versions of the likes of phantasmagoria under a killing moon i believe and both the Broken Sword games and plenty of others that have been fully updated to port modern systems and hardware such as Vista 64-bit and 7-64-bit as well and they usually go for quite cheap, usually 4 99 or 9 99 if you're in the UK and sometimes they will come with other extras as well such as soundtracks, avatars, solution guides etc. So I would recommend that if you're thinking about buying some of these games and you can't find them elsewhere. So, in conclusion, the majority of multi-disc games are indeed very good, so if you get the opportunity to buy one, I would suggest giving it a try, depending on if the genre is to your liking. Though sometimes I've looked at stuff that I have that I didn't think I would like at all, and I've just completely loved them, so you never know. So just to reiterate, best way to play these games is either emulate them via DOSBox, get them from the likes of good old games or hunt down patches for them like you can find on the Sierra help pages. Thank you for watching and I hope this has piqued your interest slightly.